Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Welcome to the KISS series, the Keeping It Simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. Each of these sessions are quick introductory sessions into the topic of partitioning, but unlike other tutorials, these are focused on developers. In the world of DevOps, developers now have to understand some of the physical design characteristics of partitioning. In this session, we'll continue on interval partitioning, but when it comes to interval partitioning for lists. This came firstly available in 12.2, so if you're on an older release, you'll need to upgrade. One of the nice things with interval range partitioning is that the partitions are created automatically. We would like to have the same for list partitions as well. One of the issues with list partitioning before 12.2 is if I had a table, say, of people, and one of the partitioning columns I'm using is by gender, that list before 12.2 had to be static. So you can see in the example there, I could have a male partition and a female partition. That means if someone changes our application and wants to insert a code, for example, mapping to unspecified for people that don't want to nominate their gender, I would get an error and my application would crash. In version 12.2 and above, you can now add the automatic clause on your partitioning definition. You must still have at least one static partition defined, but once that's done, new partitions will be created automatically. If I now try insert my row with an unspecified gender, you can see a third partition was automatically created. Just like interval range partitioning, this is given a system generated name, but you can actually rename that to whatever you like using the alter table modify partition syntax. In order to keep the number of partitions reasonable, this is the best approach used when you have a known finite size of potential values. It might be, for example, the states of the USA or the countries of the world, something where there is an upper bound. For infinitely sized or unknown sizes of values, then it's best to stay clear of automatic list partitions to make sure you don't get into unreasonable numbers of partitions. Thanks very much for watching. You can get the entire video series on partitioning from the playlist or just head over to asktom.oracle.com slash partitioning for developers. And don't forget to keep it simply SQL. See you all soon.